So pray, please God. Thank you. So hello everyone. Um, I'm Ray Inoue in Chiba University. So it's my pleasure to introduce Yuma Mizuno from Tokyo Institute of Technology. Uh, recently, he actively studies application of cluster algebra to difference equations and representation theory or so on. So today's title is Difference Equations Arising from Cluster Algebra. So please start. Thank you for introducing me, Inoue-san. First, I would like to thank organizers for giving me such a great opportunity. I also, now I share the slide and stop my face video. Uh, you can just uh, stop your video and then just click on the green button, share screen, and that will do the work. Can you see my side? Yes. Okay, sure. So today I will talk about the difference equations arising from cluster algebras. And this is my outline. So first I will talk about different uh, discrete dynamical systems on cluster varieties and uh, some general general features of these concepts. And next, I will talk about T systems in cluster algebras. And next, so I will explain the main result of this talk, which is a characterization of T systems. And finally, so I will explain a relationship to the nums problem on modular functions. So this is my outline. And now I move on to the first topic. So discrete dynamical systems on cluster varieties. About 20 years ago, Fomin and Zervinsky introduced uh, cluster algebras and almost at the same time, Hock and Goncharf introduced cluster varieties, which are the geometric counterparts of cluster algebras. And in this cluster theory, the starting point is a quiver. A quiver is a, a, just a directed graph. And in cluster theory, so for any quiver, we have the following two basic objects. The first is a so cluster variety. And the second is a so cluster modular group. An important feature of these objects is that so they have a nice combinatorial structure. Are described by quiver mutation. And from these objects, we can construct a discrete dynamical system so by the following way a cluster modular group is an automorphism group of. Uh, cluster variety. So an um, element C in the cluster modular group gives an automorphism on the cluster variety. So we have uh, this map. So by iterating the action of C, so we get the discrete dynamical system on the cluster variety XQ. So, so once we define cluster variety and cluster modular group, we, automat we almost automatically obtain a discrete dynamical system that have a nice combinatorial structure. 
So this is a discrete dynamical system on a cluster variety. So, so this is a so definition, but so it is sometimes so useful to describe more so explicit expression on so appropriate appropriate coordinates of cluster varieties. A cluster variety have a so canonical coordinate system so given by the dense open subspace of XQ isomorphic to the so algebraic torus C star N. <laughs> and the action on C star N is so restrict to the C star N is and the important point is that so action C on this algebraic torus is described by so by rational map. called cluster transformation. So in other words, so, so this birational map have a may have a so undefined undefined points on this are uh, these coordinates, but so if we extend the domain of definition of this birational map to the cluster variety so then it becomes a uh, automorphism so in particular isomorphism so this is a so important feature of the discrete dynamical system on cluster varieties so and so this feature is so can be considered as a analog of the following concepts which are well known in the so, theory of integrable systems, discrete integrable systems, so such as a so space of initial values studied by Okamoto and or and uh, so singularity confinement property so studied by Gramatikos Ramani and Papa Georgiou. So so in, in this sense, so discrete dynamical system on cross variety always have such a nice property. <laughs> and it is widely believed that so discrete dynamical system that are related to such concepts are nice ones among all possible discrete dynamical system. And in fact, many interesting so discrete dynamical system can uh, can found by studying these these phenomena such as uh, this such as discrete kind of equation so in this sense it is worth studying discrete dynamical systems on cluster varieties from a viewpoint of discrete integrable systems. So this is uh, some general feature of a discrete dynamical system on cluster varieties. So, okay. This is an introduction of my talk. <laughs> and now I move on to the more concrete concrete topic and I will talk about so T systems in cluster algebras. So T systems uh, system of algebraic relations that describe a discrete dynamical system on cluster varieties or cluster algebras. And now I would like to record the definition of T systems. And so first, I would like to record some basic definitions in cluster algebras. So cluster algebras are commutative rings 
equipped with a combinatorial structure, so described by cluster variables and so exchange relations. And these systems are descri described by so cluster variables and exchange relations. So I would like to recall the definition of these two concepts. So first, let I be a finite index set and F be a field of rational functions over Q in I variables. Then an I labeled seed in F is a pair BX where so B is an I time size Q symmetrizable integer matrix and X is an I tuple of elements in F forming a free generating set. And if B is so skew symmetric, not just a skew symmetrizable, then it is often represented as a quiver without loops nor two cycles. So throughout this talk, I will use this so graphical description for describing the seed. And so, and so, okay. And now I would like to define the quiver mutation. So let Q be a quiver and let K be a vertex of Q. Then the quiver mutation, so denoted by mu k, is a transformation of a quiver, so which transforms Q into Q prime, which is defined by the following three steps. First, for each length to pass i k j, add a new arrow from i to j. And second, to reverse all arrows incident to the vertex k. And third, remove all two cycles if these are appeared. So this is a definition of an example of a quiver mutation. And I also introduce a C seed mutation. So let B X be a I labeled seed and let K be a index in I. Then the seed mutation, which is also denoted by mu k, is a transformation of I labeled seed defined as follows. First, so B prime is given by the quiver mutation, just I defined in the last slide. And X prime is given by, so XI prime is equal to XI if I is not equal to K. And XK prime is given by the following algebraic relation. So that is XK times XK prime is equal to the product of XJ to the BJK, where the J runs in I such that BJK is greater than zero. And the second, so monomial is that product of xj to the minus bjk, where j runs in i such that bjk is less than zero. So xk, xk prime is the uh, sum of these two monomials. And so this algebraic relation is called exchange relation. And so variables appear in this, this equation. Uh, this equation are called cluster variable. So 
this is a seed mutation. And now I introduced uh, these systems. So given a sequence of quiver mutations that preserves the quiver up to relabeling the vertices, then we obtain a finite set of algebraic relations as a exchange relations. And, 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 and such a set of algebraic relation is called a T system. And since a sequence of quiver mutation preserves the quiver, we can iterate the sequence end. So this is a time, this can be considered as a time evolution of discrete systems. So we obtain a discrete dynamical system on cluster algebras. So the following picture is an example. So this is a sequence of mutation, but single sequence, so mutation at i. Then this preserves a quiver up to relabeling. So we can iterate the, this mutation to get the sequence of quiver. But so cluster variables are change, changing. So this can be considered as a so discrete dynamical systems. So this is a T system. And so now I would like to <coughs> give a more explicit example. So the first example is a SOMOS4 sequence. So SOMOS4 sequence is so defined by the following two so equations. So the first is a recurrence equation and the second is a initial values. And this is a for several terms of almost four sequence. And so the recurrence relation of this sequence can be considered as a so T system. So because so if we consider this quiver mutation, which is the same as a so example in the previous slide. Then, so the exchange relation associated with this mutation is just a single equation, which is the same as a recurrence relation in the SOMOS4 sequence. So, SOMOS, uh, so the recurrence relation in the SOMOS4 sequence is an example of T system. And one advantage of realizing SOMOS4 sequence as a T system is that the Roland phenomenon of cluster algebras. So this is a general phenomenon, general property of cluster algebras. And this say in, in this example, Roland phenomena says that any terms in SOMOS4 sequence can be represented as a Roland polynomial of initial initial so values. So in this case, initial values are one. So Roland phenomenon of cluster algebras implies so n is integer for any n. And this is so non-trivial fact because from this recurrence relation, so we can see that a n is a rational number, but it is not obvious that n is a actually an integer. So this is a first example. And I would like to explain. So one more example, this is bipartite belt. And let gamma be a thinking diagram of a bipartite symmetrizable generalized Cartan matrix. So this is an example of type B5. And bipartite, bipartite means that so we can give two colors to vertices of gamma, 
such that so connected vertices have different colors. And let Q gamma be a quiver associated with gamma. So because we have a, we have two colors, so we can orient the edges. So in this case, so orient is described by red from red to blue vertices. And then if we consider a sequence of mutations, so this mute sequence, that is first we mutate it, mutate all blue vertices and then we mutate all red vertices, then we can see that this sequence of mutation preserves the quiver Q gamma. So we get the T system. And in this case, so T system is uh, described by the following algebraic relations. If we <coughs> so if we so denote the class of variables by so T some variable T A U. So this is a so as a Right hand side is a sum of two monomials. The first monomial is an empty monomial, and second monomial is a, so described by the matrix N, which is a adjacency matrix of the Dinkin diagram gamma. So this is a bipartite belt. And so forming and Zerwinski proves the following very interesting property of this T system, this bipartite bit. So the theorem is that so this T system is periodic if and only if the gamma is of finite type. And moreover, if gamma is in decomposable, the period is given by two times H plus two, where H is a coxeter number of gamma. So, so these theorems give a very interesting connection between the so discrete dynamical system in cross algebras and the theory of root system. So this is a second example. <laughs> okay, now I would like to talk about the main result of this talk, uh, characterization of T systems. So now let R be a positive integer and let so TAU where A is an uh, integer from one to R and U is a uh, integer B so indeterminates and consider the following system of algebraic relations. So this looks somewhat complicated, but it is not. So this equation says that, so a single monomial is equal to the sum of two monomials. And these monomials are characterized by the exponents, these exponents. So, and so it is easy to see that uh, T systems in cluster algebras always have so this form. But of course, so a system of algebraic relation of this form is not always a T system. So we consider the following problem. So giving a necessary and sufficient condition for this equation, uh, for this system of algebraic relations to be a T system for some mutation, some sequence of mutation. So this is a, so 
characterization. I mean, and so it is not difficult to see the following four conditions are necessary condition. So first condition is that so n a b b zero so the exponent in the left hand side can be written as a delta a b times delta p zero plus delta a sigma b times delta p p a for some permutation sigma and some positive integer p a. So where delta is a chronic delta. So this says that so left hand side can, left hand side left hand side can be written as a so product of two variables so not arbitrary monomial but product of two variables so this is easy to this is easy consequence of the form of exchange relations in the definition of the seed mutation. And the second example, uh, and the second condition says that, so in the right-hand side, the exponents are non-negative. So this says that the right-hand side is a sum of two monomials, not only just lower monomial, but monomial. And the co condition, the third condition says that so NABP plus equal zero and NABP minus is equal to zero and unless P is greater than zero and less than PA. So this is somewhat complicated, but this condition says that any TAU can be written as a rational function in the initial variables, where initial means that so indices of indeterminates rise in R, rise in the set R initial, which is defined as a, so AP in so, so such that so P is greater than or equal to zero and less than PA. In particular, this is a finite, finite set. <clears throat> so this is a consequence from the fact that in cluster algebra, any so cluster variables can be written as a rational expression of the initial cluster variables. And the final condition, and for say that NABP plus times NABP minus is equal to zero for any ABP. And this says that uh, two monomials in the right hand side do not have the so, common divisors. So this also follows from uh, definition of exchange relations. So we can see that these are necessary conditions for this system of algebraic relations to be a T system. But so it turns out that these are not sufficient. And to describe a necessary and sufficient condition, it is useful to introduce the following matrices. So these matrices ties in the R times R matrices in uh, polynomial one, one variable polynomial ring and these matrices are uh, defined as follows so that is uh, a b entry of so n0 is given by this polynomial so and this polynomial in this polynomial and p coefficient is so given by the NABP zero. And so similar to 
and percent and minus. And so using this matrix form, so ah, uh, sorry, now, now I would like to give an example. So in SOMOS4 recurrence, so uh, the recurrence relation in SOMOS4 sequence can be re represented by the following algebraic relations. So uh, in the previous example, we denote by AN, but in, in this slide, this is so T1 U, where U is equal to N. And in this case, so these matrices are given by this, these equations. So this one plus four comes from this u and u plus four, and this two times z to the two comes comes from so this this monomial. So this u plus two is uh, this d to the two, and this power two is uh, this quotient. And so this z plus z to the three comes from this monomial. And in bipartite pair case, these matrices are given by, and zero is equal to the diagonal matrices so whose entries are one plus d to the two, and n plus is equal to zero because this is empty monomial, and so n minus is d to the uh, d times n, where n is the uh, adjacency matrices of a uh, so thinking diagram. And so using this matrices form, so, so we can give a necessary and sufficient conditions as follows. So this is a main result of this talk. So first I give a so key definition, a tree proof matrices alpha a plus a minus a d is a so t datum of size r if a plus minus can be written as a plus minus is equal to n zero minus n plus minus by a triple of matrices and zero n plus n minus satisfying the condition n one from n four and d is a d is a positive integer diagonal matrix such that so n0 d is equal to d n0 and d in plus in plus minus d lies in the so this set and finally n plus d a minus dagger is equal to a minus d a plus dagger where a plus minus dagger is equal to the a plus minus uh, so from a plus minus first we substitute z by so z inverse and then we transpose the matrix so among these conditions the most non-trivial condition is uh, this condition this is a important remark. So this is a so definition of a so t data. And then the theorem is as follows. So let alpha be a t data. Then there exists an so r initial times r initial skew symmetrizable integer matrix B alpha such that the uh, algebraic relations associated with the uh, triple of matrices and zero n plus n minus is a T system for a sequence of mutations on B alpha. And moreover, 
all T systems in cluster algebras are realized in this way. So this completely characterizes uh, so T systems in cluster algebras by the so by a T data. So and so since so this third condition the most non-trivial and most most <laughs> essential ones. So in this sense, so T systems can be characterized by this single matrix equation. So this is a main result. And moreover, there is a explicit formula. And this formula is used in the proof of the theorem. And also, it is useful to calculate concrete examples. So I would like to so explain an explicit formula. So to give an explicit formula, so we need the following concept that the Langland dual T data, so which is denoted by alpha check. So this is a Langland dual of alpha. This is called a Langland dual of alpha, which is defined as follows. First A plus minus check is equal to D inverse A plus minus D and D check is equal to so D minus times the following sum normalizing factor. Then using so the original T data alpha and the Langland dual T data alpha check, B alpha is given by the following so single equation. I will not explain the detail about this equation, but so this equation says that so B alpha, the entries of B alpha is given by the so this equation, which are described by the matrix elements in alpha and alpha check. So this is a explicit formula. And now I would like to give a example. So, so <laughs> in some small case, so the associated T data is given by the following so matrices. And this is actually T data because A plus D A minus Daga is given by this polynomial and A minus D A minus D A plus Daga is given by this polynomial and so we can see that these polynomials are equal, this coincides. And from the explicit formula so just in, given in the last slide, so the B alpha is given by the following quiver, so which recovers the so quiver, which of course recovers the quiver in the first example in this talk. And more generally, if R is equal to one, so the matrix size is equal to one, so it is not difficult to prove that A plus A minus D is a T data if and only if A plus minus a palindromic polynomial. So palindromic means that, so, so if we read the polynom some polynomials, so for example, this polynomial from left to right and right to left, then the sequence of coefficients coincide. So this is uh, palindromic. And in fact, so this 
So this characterization is already obtained by OD and MASH in, uh, I, I think, 10, almost 10 years ago. So in this sense, so the main theorem of this talk can be considered as a generalization of the result of so their, their result for so perindromist polynomial. So So this is okay. And so now uh, I, I skipped the second example and and finally so I would like to give a so relation to numbers problem or modular functions. So first so let A be a R times R skew symmetric ah uh, no symmetric and positive definite matrix in rational entries and let B be a so vector rational vector and C be a rational number and for any tuple R tuple of natural number N we define the following Following ones. First, capital QN is a quadratic form given by these three objects. That is, QN is equal to so one over two times n transpose a n plus n transpose b plus c and and so this QN is a Q hammer symbol. That is. Qn is equal to uh, so 1 minus q times 1 minus q squared, dot, 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 1 minus q to the n. Then, norms problem is the following problem. So, find a tuple ABC such that FABCQ defined by the so sum of so this sum and so this is a Q series. And so this to find ABC such that so this Q series is a so modular functions. So this is a norms problem. And so in this talk we assume that B is equal to zero. So since so, so the relation to the class of theory only found in this case. And this Problem is motivated by so Rogers Lamarckian type identities and also motivated by fermionic formulas of characters in conformal field theories. And if R is equal to 1, there is a complete answer to this question. So that is, FA0CQ is modular if and only if and C are the one of the following three tuples. So, but the case for R is greater than or equal to is not well understood. So Terahoeb and Zagi A gives candidate for R is equal to. So these are list. They are list. But so as far as I know, so it is not. Uh, as far as I know, so, so, so this is a, uh, I, I, I don't know this is a complete list or not. And now I'm conjecture that, so this so problem is uh, related to torsion elements in Rojo group. Or, so in other words, so algebraic K theory. So this conjecture connects. Uh, this conjecture gives very interesting connection between the number theory and the theory of so 
mathematical physics such as conformal field theory. And so one of my motivation is uh, so one of my motivation is uh, up developing an approach to this numbers problem from the cluster theory. And so and so So this is a so my conjecture. So first let a uh, first so we define alpha is of finite type if the T system associated with alpha is periodic. And now suppose that alpha is of finite type and so and zero is diagonal. So this is uh, some technical conditions. And the uh, and then we have the following so key property. So let k be the R times R matrix defined by k is equal to a plus inverse times a minus and substitute t is equal to one. So this is a rational matrix, R times R rational matrix. Then the state the so statement is that K times D is a positive definite symmetric matrix. Then the conjecture is as follows. Let the alpha Q be, uh, be the Q series defined by this equation. So this is a similar to the definition in the norms problem, but so we replace A into the, so K check D check and in the denominator we replace q to the so q to the q to the d d i check then the conjecture is that so there exists some rational number c such that q to the c times the alpha q is a modular function so this conjecture says that so some so periodicity conditions so on T system is related to the so modularity of this Q series. And so this is the final slide, and I would like to give two evidence for this conjecture. The first evidence is uh, somewhat heuristic ones. So they say that so for many alpha, the alpha Q coincide with the Q series in Rogers Lamarckian type identities or ferromionic formulas or the candidates given by Terahoeven and Zagier. And the second example is more conceptual. Uh, se second evidence is mo more conceptual one. So they say that. This conjecture is consistent with the asymptotic behavior of the alpha Q by virtue of the diagonal dilogarism di identities in cluster algebras that was proved by Nakanishi. So that is, so the majority assumption gives a strict condition gives a strict condition for the, the asymptotic behavior of this Q series, but this so condition can be proved by without majority assumption, but using a so general cluster theory. So this is a second, a second evidence. So, and so this is a summary of my talk. And so thank you for listening. Right. You're on mute, Ray. Yep. Perhaps you need to turn up the volume.
maybe yeah. I can ah you, I can hear I could hear you a little bit just then oh I see oh so this is I, better I try, try to talk loudly yeah. <laughs> okay uh, I'm sorry um, is there any questions or comments Maybe I have one question. Oh, yes, so, please. Yeah, Ms. Uh, oh, okay. I, 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 I'm Dajun from Shanghai. Uh, so you talk about cluster Oliver. Are there any uh, connection between this cluster Oliver and partial difference equations? Oh. Two dimensional, because you, you are talking about one dimensional difference equation. I mean, the relation between cluster algebra and the two-dimensional difference equation. Are there any two so, two-dimensional? So I'm not sure what it means two-dimensional. So. so those are lattice equations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. So instead of one independent variable, you have two independent variables, n and m, for example. Oh. Oh. So, so in so in so t in t system so the number of variables so is related to the so size of matrix matrices in t data so in some sense so if r is equal to one the size r is equal to one this is a single single variable equation and so if r is greater than or equal to two so these systems gives a so more high, higher dimensional equations mm, so you mean independent variable yeah independent variable ah yes independent variable Independent. Ah, independent means so. Ah, uh, this is dependent. I I'm not sure the difference between independent or dependent uh, in this R context. Is the number of dependent variables. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Ah. So the uh, I see. I see. Uh, corresponds to the number of independent variables. Oh, I, I, I see. Mm. Oh, so I'm not sure whether it can be possible to gen generalize the number of number of so time variables, independent variables. Okay, okay. okay I got so other questions or comments? Can I ask a question, please? Um, yeah. So the SOMOS4 sequence comes from, as you might already know, of course, you probably know, uh, the uh, bilinear equation associated with the discrete Pandave equation. And so my question is, are there cluster algebras associated with every bilinear equation? Oh, every linear. So, so, I, I think not every linear equation, so, so for example so in in discrete Pandave equation only q, q, uh, cluster theory so this is so i see and i see so you need a specific so type additive, additive and elliptic type does I not see. appear I see. thank you yes um, and so this may relate to the so the ge geometry of uh, the 
So space of initial values, and because this is a related to cluster variety, and this is a some specific space described by so three permutations. I see. Thank you. Uh, other questions or comments? Uh, I have one question. Um, so is it easy to know the sequence of mutation exactly uh, from the T datum? Is it easy uh, to know? Yes, it, it is easy. And so I, I, I would like to explain explain this in example so yes so the next formula the the set of vertices in quiva is described by the set r initial which is a so some tuple and the the mutation vertices is given by the so p is equal to zero. So in this example, so this so the mutation the vertices mutation vertices is this left above one. <laughs> so the condition is given by p is equal to zero. And so in more more higher example, mm -hmm. so there are several P equals zero vertices in this case, so this one and this one, this one and this one and this one. And in this case, so alpha has two connected component and if we mutate it, this left quiver then we get this right quiver and if we, we mutate it, this right quiver then we get this left quiver so this can be considered as a sequence of mutation i see so i see so you mean that by looking at uh, the set r initial then uh, you know the yes sequence of mutation explicitly. Yes, exactly, yes. I see. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, so uh, let's finish today's talk. So thank you very much for Yuma. Thank you.